Hi everyone and welcome back to the Beginners Free CAD series for version 1. We're going to create a very simple hinged box with hinges applied using the part design linear pattern. For the lid we're going to take a shield cut and use a rotated part design clone. We're in the part design, we've created a new document, we'll create a new body and a new sketch on the XY plane, this one here. Let's bring our view back into position. I'm going to use a centered rectangle, Winston to the center. Come out, and before we drop it, let's set the top dimension to 150 millimeters. Press Tab to go to the next dimension and set that to 75 millimeters. So we've got our length and our width. Let's close that. The sketch is selected. Let's pad that by 25 millimeters. I'm going to hit home on the keyboard just to center our view. So next, let's tackle the hinge. Now I'm tackling the hinge early. An awful process would be to hollow out the inside here. I'm not going to do that because I may want the other side as a shorter lid. If I created, say, a thickness in here and rotated this with a part design clone, then I would have two sides the same width. And if I try to alter that, then I would have to do some filling in the void. Let's bring our model around to look to this face. Select it and create a sketch. We're going to create a hinge. I'm going to import some geometry using the external geometry tool and select the top point. Let's use a polyline. Now the hinge will come down from say here and it's going to come up and connect to this point. See we've got the vertical constraint already added and then I'm going to come out slightly and this will create a distance away so the lid doesn't get stuck. Now I've still got the polyline active. If I hit M on the keyboard, I can change the mode. So I want to hit M again and once more and I get to the arcs. Now this is going to go down this way. Let's hit M again to get to the other arc. This is the arc that I want. I'm going to bring the arc all the way around and connect up to our starting point. Let's right click to cancel the tool and right click again and have a look to see what we've got. So these two, I'm going to make tangent with each other and hit OK. The rest looks fine. I'm going to set some distance away from this point using the dimensioning tool and we'll set that to 0.5 millimeters. Still have the dimensioning tool active. So we'll set a height here and we'll set that to six millimeters. And now we'll set some radius on this arc and we'll set that to three millimeters. We need a hole in our hinge. We use a circle, Winston to the center, come out. The diameter of that is going to be three millimeters. I'm just going to type that in and press enter. Right click to cancel and we've got a basic hinge. Let's close out and have a look to see what we've got. So our hinge is sitting there. All we now have to think about is how many hinges we want to cross here. We have to think about how much of the available box length one set of hinges takes up, as in the top and bottom connectors. So we have 150. And if we say a hinge takes up six of the space, then we can do 150 divided by six, which is 25 for a full length of the hinge. As said, the hinge is in two parts, top and bottom. So we need to half that at 12.5 millimeters. So let's take the sketch and create a pad and set it to 12.5 millimeters. We can see it hasn't taken effect. So let's double click the pad. Let's try it reverse. So we have the pad in there. We just needed to reverse the direction. Let's hit OK. So six occurrences will cover the entire side. However, we may need to leave a small gap to allow clearance for the mating hinge. We can reduce the pad distance slightly for any gap that's needed, ensuring that the fit isn't too tight. Let's create the linear pattern. Select the pad, come up to part design, apply a pattern, and select linear pattern. We can see it's gone off into this direction. 
which is the horizontal sketch axis. We need the X axis, this one here. We can see we've got another hinge here. So the length at the moment, that's set this to 150, 150 millimeters. And click off. Because we've got two hinges, we can see it's gone past the edge of the box. So we need to subtract 25 from here. That's minus 25. And click off. Now it's placed away from the edge. We've got one hinge length here. So when we clone this and flip this over, the hinges will interlink with each other. Let's increase the occurrences and set this to six. As we increase those, we can see what's happening. Let's hit OK. So we've almost completed one side. What I'm going to do now is select the linear pattern and create a part design clone. Available from part design and create clone. Now we have two bodies. I'm going to select the other body from the tree view and right click and transform. Now we take this and rotate it around the other way. This is just to get an idea of what it's going to look like. And then we can pull this up above the box. I've got the translation increment set to 15. We can lower that or for more accuracy, come into the body, look at the placement, position, looking along the Z axis. And we change that and lower that down into position until the hinge is made. They can see them there. Let's rename the body. So the bottom body here, I'm going to rename to container body and lid, we'll rename to lid body. At the moment, the container body is active. We have a clone in the lid body. Click the clone, we can see the base feature is linear pattern. So we've cloned all the way up to this linear pattern. Just going to collapse the lid body, click on it and press the spacebar to hide it or use the little eye on the tree view. Let's bring this around. So if I click on the top face, we're editing the last feature all the way up to the last feature. I can now create my hollow in here. Now, if I apply a thickness, this won't take. And the reason why is because if you look at this, we've got the linear pattern. And if we zoom in, we've got a thickness that would involve coming in around and following along the linear pattern. We just want a simple void removed from in here. Simple rectangle. So I'm going to create a sketch on top of this face a new sketch and we'll create a standard rectangle and place that within. Right click to cancel and really I should have done a centered rectangle so I'm going to take these two points and the center point and create a symmetrical constraint to bring this out to see where it's going to sit. Use the external geometry tool to import Top point, right click to cancel. We'll set a distance away from those two of three millimeters. And the same in the upper direction as well, along the vertical of three millimeters. So we're fully constrained, let's close that. Our sketch is within. Take the sketch and use a pocket. And I'm going to pocket this down and you use the up key. And I don't want it to come out the bottom, so I'm going to back it off the bottom to 22 millimeters and hit OK. We've got one side of our box. Let's have a look at the other side, lid body, and hide the container body. Now I've selected this once, the pocket has been selected. Click again and again, and it goes up to the body. Just press the space bar. If we press the space bar whilst the pocket's selected, then it will just hide the pocket and not the body. And that can cause confusion when you go back to your model. 
So we're going to do the same thing. Now I want this a different size. Let's have a thinner box. So I'm going to come around to this side. Let's make sure the lid body, double click on it so it's active. And let's create a sketch upon the side. New sketch. And we'll create a simple rectangle like so. Let's make sure it's symmetrical using the symmetry constraint. And it doesn't matter about the length as long as we're removing material from the side. What we want is the height. So I want to reduce the height of the box, let's say by 10 mil. And we'll set a length to 80. So this profile, if I close it, I can use that profile, that sketch, and we'll use a pocket. And we'll go through all, reducing the size of the box and hitting OK. And then I can look at the bottom, click it, and create a sketch upon there. This time, using the center rectangle, hover over the center point, come out, drop the rectangle in, right click to cancel, and then take the top point and then set some distance between these two of three millimeters. And again, in the other direction, of three millimeters. It close and then we do our final pocket. So we take that sketch and pocket that to seven millimeters. and hit OK. So now what we have is the container body and the lid. Now, if I take the top and right click and toggle transparency, we can see inside. And what I want to do is create some clearance between these hinges. So if we remember back to our container body, Let's double click it to make it active. We've got a pad in here. Now I should have renamed the pad. Now I believe it's this one. Press the space bar and that will go to that pad because it's hidden. So we can see the pad there. This is the tip and this is the pad that created the hinge. So I'm going to select the pocket and press the space bar. Select that pad and double click it and we'll watch 12.5 so let's make this 12.45 and hit enter that should have created a small clearance between those you can see that there so that gives a bit of clearance let's double click that pad again and bring this down to four zero and hit refresh. So you can see that's moved, that's added the clearance there. So we've got a bit of clearance, a bit of room for those hinges not to be tight on each other. Let's hit OK. So now we have a simple hinge box using the linear pattern. And if this linear pattern changed, double click it, and say reduce the currencies to five they won't be in place let's refresh that so you can see as i reduce the currencies and hit refresh it propagates up so if we wanted a hinge arrangement like this then we could use that so that's how to use a linear pattern in a practical design we also included multi-body modeling and using the clone so if we look at the clone, what we have is we've built upon the clone with two pockets. And if we look back to the original container body, we cloned from the linear pattern. We cloned from here. We can see that on the clone, the linear pattern. And we carried on the workflow for the lid from the linear pattern, adding that pocket. So I hope you enjoyed that video. 
and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.